One of the biggest astronomical events of 2023 turned out to be an accidental discovery of a supernova from a galaxy not so far away. The event that you see right here, located in a galaxy approximately 20 million light years away from us. And one of the main reasons why it was so exciting is actually because this is the first time so many different telescopes were able to directly observe supernova happening in practically real time. Observing the exact changes in luminosity, precise changes in a lot of different emissions, and more importantly, the exact changes that occurred after just a few days. And as a result of this, this became the most studied supernova of recent times. Even after just a few months, there are already close to about 40 different scientific papers that have been published about this in just the last few weeks. And though 20 million light years away from us is still kind of far, this is still the closest supernova in the last decade. But much more importantly, we now also have a lot more techniques we did not have previously in order to actually establish exactly what's going on here, not just in terms of the luminosity and the change in frequencies, but now the scientists are even able to work out the actual shape of the explosion as it happens in real time, which is mostly done by measuring polarized light. This is a technique known as spectropolarimetry. And so by essentially measuring polarization of light as it comes from this explosion, it becomes possible to determine the exact geometry of the object and work out the changes in the shape of the supernova as it happens. And as a result of this, in just the last few weeks, various scientific teams were able to work out pretty much everything there is to know about this very typical type 2 supernova. Everything from the star that exploded all the way to how it progressed and what happened at the end. And as always, you can find a lot of the studies about this in the description below. Anyway, a wonderful person, this is Anton. Let's discuss the supernova once again, focusing on a lot of details that have been discovered in just the last few months. And once again, mostly because of various polarimetric studies that allow the scientists to work out the exact shape of this object. For example, first of all, by examining the precursor star, it became pretty obvious that this was a star very similar to Betelgeuse a red supergiant approximately 10 to maybe 20 masses of the Sun that seem to have increased in brightness in the last few years. Actually, because of this discovery and because of what's happening to Betelgeuse, there have been maybe some suggestions that maybe Betelgeuse is going to supernova soon too. Okay, not like soon soon, but much sooner than we expected. You can learn more about this in one of the videos in the description. And so, as the core of the star collapsed, most likely leaving behind a black hole or a neutron star, once the explosion started, that's when we actually start seeing the luminosity increase dramatically. Interestingly though, prior to the explosion, the star has already emitted quite a lot of material by shedding gas for thousands and possibly millions of years. Approximately 5% of the total mass of the star was already deposited as a kind of a shell around it. But as the explosion occurs, this new explosion wave has to now plow through all of this material, and as it basically interacts with it, it produces a lot of different emissions. And for this study, one of the most important emissions was basically polarization. Because here, if this was, for example, a symmetric cloud or essentially a sphere, it would be completely unpolarized. The light would not have shifted at all because the electric fields inside the cloud would cancel everything out. But it's extremely unlikely to have such a perfect sphere. A much more likely result is usually some kind of an asymmetric cloud that's going to produce polarization as a result of elongation of the object. And so for this particular supernova, even from the start, the deviation because of polarization was at least 1%. And though it might sound like a very small amount, it's actually quite a lot for explosions where the materials move really fast. And as a result of these observations, the scientists here identified three separate stages, three phases in the evolution of this exploding star, separated by very specific transitions with the first stage lasting for approximately 2 to 3 days. This is when the light was dominated by various emissions from the circumstellar medium, or basically all of the gas that was left behind from all of the previous emissions that lasted for thousands of years. And so basically, as the explosion plows through this gas, it starts to interact with various atoms that were thrown off by the star during its red giant stage. And so because the explosion itself produces a lot of X-rays and ionizes all of this gas, a lot of the material here starts to glow, producing very specific spectral emissions. This is usually referred to as the shock ionization. And so here we actually detect very specific lines of hydrogen, helium, carbon, nitrogen, visible for at least two and a half days right after the explosion began. But interestingly, 
Because of the polarization, it doesn't seem to be coming from something that's spherical. As a matter of fact, the assumption from the paper implies that all of this gas produced a non-spherical shape approximately 30 astronomical units in radius. That's sort of like the distance from the Sun to Neptune. But this only lasted for just under 3 days. Because the explosion here is expanding really really fast, all of this abruptly disappears at 3.5 days after the explosion. And so between 3 and 5 days, we reach the second stage. Here the polarization drops dramatically, because at this point everything starts to appear more or less spherical. And the ejecta emerging from the explosion almost completely covers the circumstellar gas released from the star. As a matter of fact, at this point, the entire geometry of the explosion seems to shift dramatically. This most likely happens because at this point, there is no more interaction with the gas from the star, and all of this ejecta is now able to move freely without interacting with anything. But then after about 4.5 days, so here we're talking about 5 to 15 days, the ejecta from the explosion breaks through all of the circumstellar material and engulfs everything around it. But at this point, the polarization data suggests that it assumes some kind of a peanut-like geometry. Not the spherical geometry that we usually expect from supernova. And in this case it's very likely because the initial gas that it had to pass through, that was released by the star previously, seemed to have some kind of a disk-like formation, which ended up slowing down some of the material and resulted in a non-spherical shape. And so the fastest moving material is actually moving along the polar axis, with the material along the edges moving much slower. But after about 5 days, for about 10 days or so, nothing much changed. At this point, the ejecta from the explosion dominates everything, but also slowly starts to dissipate, reducing the overall luminosity of the explosion, with the supernova itself reaching the luminosity peak and then slowly decreasing over time. And of course, after a few months, it's practically invisible. We're still going to be able to see some kind of a supernova remnant and very likely some kind of a gas formation in the vicinity, but in terms of overall luminosity, it will be very difficult to see anything now. With the overall conclusion so far, suggesting that, well, first of all, this was definitely a typical type 2 supernova, but a supernova that started in some kind of a very dense, optically thick, circumstellar disk. And the interaction with this disk was visible for at least 8 days after the explosion started. And because of the interaction with this disk, it might have even increased the overall luminosity of the supernova, making it just a little bit brighter. Basically suggesting that the amount of gas lost by the star before it explodes does determine the overall brightness and the overall emissions from the supernova itself. But except for that, everything else about it was quite as expected and quite typical. Even the composition of all of this gas released by the star was very typical of a red supergiant, similar to Betelgeuse. Interestingly though, the studies discover that in the last 3 to 6 years before the collapse, the overall mass loss of the star increased dramatically, resulting in what the scientists refer to as superwind, basically stellar winds with velocities of up to 50 km per second. A little fact we can now use to maybe discover other supergiants that are about to go supernova. As far as we know, Betelgeuse is not there just yet. But for supernova scientists, or really anyone studying astronomy, these few months have been super exciting. So far this has been one of the most investigated supernova ever, and allow scientists to discover and confirm a lot of different ideas we had about supernova, in the process helping us understand what happens to these stars, and what exactly happens right after they explode, with absolutely incredible accuracy. Here the scientists were able to observe changes practically in real time. So definitely, cool stuff, really exciting discoveries, and something we might learn more about, if another supernova even closer to us happens in the next few years. And so until then, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, check out all of the papers in the description below, check out previous videos about the supernova in the description as well, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.